Today we're making Christmas tag signs. Keep watching! For option number one, I'm going to take these vintage doilies, a box top from Dollar Tree, and a summer tag sign from Dollar Tree. That's how we're going to start. Just pointing out there that there's a faded area, but that won't matter because we have a way to hide that. I'm going to carefully pull those apart. I think they're kind of fragile. I'm going to cut off the tag. I mean the, uh, the hanger. And decide where we want to place it. You can get doilies. I think they're cloth from Dollar Tree and they might have some paper ones too. Pretty much going to use the same technique for this. So I've decided to slide that box top up to be closer to the top. And I'm going to trim this doily. And there we go. And then for the bottom, I'm going to use this one. Good old trusty glue stick from Dollar Tree. I'm going to gently add that down. I'm not going to be bearing down on this with the edge of that ruler because I don't want to tear those little delicate pieces so I'm just kind of pressing and pressing with my hands to stick that down on there and we're gonna do the same thing with the bottom I think that these doilies give it a a pretty snowflake look and I haven't seen this done and I watch a lot of other youtubers for inspiration and I haven't seen this done yet so I thought this would be something fun to do we're going to take the edges off of the box you can cut these off or you can use an exacto knife or a rotary cutter I don't have one of those yet and then you have pieces left for crafting with later or you can do like I did and use a couple of those pieces to trim this out once you get it on the box on the tag. This is pretty easy to cut out. It has, you just cut right along that fold. Be sure that you make it a nice clean cut as good as you can though, so you don't leave any, you know, any of that green on there on the sides. We want those gray sides to be flush with the sides of the sign. Okay, so to hold this down, I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue. This will easily pop off if I want to change this out at some point because this is regular a regular it's not gorilla glue in other words so it should come off pretty easy so now I'm trying to decide where I want to put my border a little hot glue there and just press that in place and I'm gonna do the same thing on the top I'm going to take my sanding block from Dollar Tree. Again, I'm all, I'm going to cry if I don't find some more of these soon. I might have to go to Amazon and look for them because I love these. They give the best edging, really give a nice look. This is in a fast speed, so you can't really tell, but I am being very gentle around the doily so that I don't pull it and tear it. And the glue stick has worked well to keep it in its place. 
So when you go over the green there on the edge and on the edge of the box with that sander, it gives it kind of a white aged look, which I really like. And I think it's great for a rustic or farmhouse look, giving it a little history, if you will. Looks like it's been around a while. Aged to perfection. And there we go. So I wanted to add a little extra trim here and I'm taking a little of this jute cord, cutting a piece long enough that we can wrap to the back so we don't have to put any glue on the front. So if you hold it tightly in place, then it'll be in the same spot when you flip it over, just using the little extra corners of those box top sides as little band-aids to hold down my, my cord there. I want to do that on all the pieces. There you go. This bow came off of another project, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how I made this so you can make one similar to it for yours. Just use some wired ribbon and you're going to need some jingle bells, whatever color and style you like. And see that I tore it off of another project. But since it's already made, I'm just going to use it. Now I'll show you how to make the bow. You're going to take a length of wired ribbon, and this is about, hmm, I'd say about eight inches. You're going to fold it over into a loop or a circle and glue those ends together. Let it cool for a second, cut another piece, Lay it on top, squish them together, and then take a piece of cord, ribbon, twist tie, pipe cleaner, whatever you got, and put a knot in it. You can trim that off. Dovetail the ends of the bow. And then you're going to take a little bit of hot glue and add some in the middle. That's all you have to do. So I'm going to take this little stick or this little dowel here that I had in my craft stash. I'm going to gently poke a hole back through the doily so that I can make a hanger. I'm going to use a little hot glue on the end of this cord and twist it. That'll give it a nice point that won't fray so that I can easily thread it back through the original holes that the original hanger came through. And you certainly use the original cord if you want to and put it right back on. I want my knots to be in the front, so I'm just gonna make a little loose knot on each side. When you slide them back through, you can see the knot on the front. And trim off your little pieces that remain and we're gonna put the bow down now. So you wanna get that centered and just put that bow up there to complete your look. So this is look number one. This is our red truck Christmas tag. That is a beautiful box top. And to think of someone just tearing through it, ugh, just breaks my heart. So here is our second option. Using the same package of doilies, we're going to get two of those out. And they're really stuck together, so be sure that you, you just have one layer or you're going to have issues when you try to glue it. I want to put these off center. And I'm going to add a metal snowflake and a jingle all the way metal piece that came off of another sign from Dollar Tree. I'm going to take dark steel and satin nickel. And I'm going to take those outside and give each of those metal pieces a quick spray with the dark steel and then let it dry, go back outside and spray paint a little bit of the nickel on top, just a light dusting of it. Then I'm gonna take my glue stick and I'm gonna put this down while 
my metal pieces are drying. Again, patting down, pressing down to make sure that this glue is grabbing on to this paper. Be careful not to cover the entire board. Just do as much as you can and then go back along the edges where you need it. Pressing down firmly so that it gets all the little edges. You don't want anything peeling up because if it starts to peel, it could catch on something and just ruin your project. So be sure that you're really getting that down. Take your scissors and trim off. You can leave a little on the edge. Don't be, no need to be exact on this because we're gonna sand this down just like we did on the other one. Go along your edges and just cut, cut. Okay. Sanding block. Again, this is in a fast speed, but you are going to be careful with this so that you don't tear any pieces or snag any pieces and destroy your project. See, it just frays right off of there. Careful around the corners here. I had to slow it down for you to show you what it looks like, how I really do it. You gotta be kind of careful with this. And it looks like it was painted on, you know, from a distance. Obviously, if you're up close, you can see that it's not, that it's an applique, but it's pretty. And to me, it does look like there are snowflakes on there. So it's all dry. First attempt I made was with the glue from Dollar Tree, which was a no-go. So I went back with my Gorilla Glue. Be careful with this. Don't put so much glue like I did. I didn't, I wanted to make sure that it stuck down, but I went a little bit overboard in some areas, which cause a little bit of bleed through. It is something that I fix and you'll see that once this is dry in a few minutes. But yeah, it was kind of kind of yucky. And to think I could have avoided it, mm, I'm hoping that you can avoid it now. Carefully place it where you want it because you don't want to slide it at all or move it once you put it down because it'll leave a mess. I just took a large plastic bag and a weight and covered this up once it is dry this is how it looks the Gorilla Glue did a fantastic job but you can see where I have some residue here I'm going to take a fingernail filer or an emery board and just file on that a little bit and that's gonna soften that look you can you can definitely still tell but it's not as bad Gotta be super careful around that doily. So see if you can avoid that by just putting on a little bit less paint, that would be great. I've saved the sign that I peeled the jingle all the way from for another project. So nothing's wasted and I, I ended up with two, two projects from one which makes them about 50 cents a piece. Okay, same process as before. We're going to glue the end of our piece of twine, make a knot on the front, pull it through and trim it up on both sides. Which one of these is your favorite? I'm going to make a little bow to go on the top. These are three 12 inch pieces of jute cord. I'm just going to make a little shoestring bow here. And then I'm going to decide where I want to put it and it's going to be in the right corner. A little hot glue keeps it in place. I certainly hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for stopping by. Welcome to my, all my newbies. Thank you so much to you guys who've been around from the beginning. 
and enjoy hanging out with me here on my channel. I will see you again real soon. Bye.